uh, update right now from Sergeant uh, Perrine, sure John Perrine with Indiana State up. Police. Uh, but at this point, we don't, we haven't found any mechanical error that would cause that. Uh, so uh, I-70 has been closed since then. Unfortunately, it's expected to be closed through the rush hour, at least another three or four hours. Uh, it's caused quite a traffic headache. One of the biggest problems we're seeing right now, and it's not only unsafe, it's really hindering our response, is people are driving the wrong way on the interstate to get out of this traffic mess. Now, our local media is doing a fantastic job of letting everybody know that this is happening. Don't take your chances. You need to get off before you get stuck in the traffic. If you get past Shadeland, you're going to be stuck for a long time. So if you're westbound on I-70, if you're coming in from the east side, take the long way, go, go up to the north side and come south, or go south and come north. But take the long way into the city. You'll be able to get here a lot quicker. What is the estimated cost of damage at all? <clears throat> Uh, I, you know, that's a good question for NDOT. I'm not sure exactly how much one of these signs costs, but I imagine it's not something that's going to be cheap. Can you talk about, um, this isn't like a normal crash. The sign takes up the whole interstate, and they've got to have those lanes over there, too, to be able to work. Talk about just the expense of all of it. Yeah, it's, it's a huge effort. I mean, NDOT, it's all hands on deck. They, they've sent all the workers that they have available, but they're waiting on two cranes. It takes actually two large cranes uh, to move this sign, and, and they've, They've got to get it hooked up to it. They've got to get it unbolted. They've got to get it on a trailer. That's all going to take a lot of time. And they've got to do it safely. Unfortunately, we have no options. We can't open one or two lanes because, as you can see, that sign is just dangling there. And semis and other things would hit it as low as it is. How high does that sign have to be legally? And how high does that dump truck bed have to go in order to hit the <laughs> catching me off guard with that question. I don't know what, what the legal height is, but I know that every single day, wide loads, semis, dump trucks pass under it very safely. Uh, the dump bed went up, made that vehicle higher than it legally is allowed to be, which hit the hit the sign. Will, oh, oh, will the driver be charged at all? Uh, there, there are potential for certain citations, uh, but that'll be up to our motor carrier inspection inspectors what they do with that. What is that in the investigation here? What are they doing to see what happened? So we're doing what we call a level one inspection. So that means they're, they're checking everything on that truck from the brakes to the airlines to the hydraulic lines. Uh, they'll check all the paperwork associated with the company, uh, with the driver, uh, and make sure that they were operating uh, legally. And uh, all that takes some time, but our inspectors are on scene and they're doing that right now. Will that include things like I think nobody was injured in this crash, and we're very fortunate for that. And so the law doesn't require a blood draw. But if the, the officers or the inspector have any reason to believe impairment might be the key, then they could move forward with that. Do you know if the truck was from here locally? Where uh, Mitchell, was Mitchell, Indiana is where it's from. So I'm not sure where it was going, but it's from Mitchell, Indiana. Was it carrying anything? I think it was empty. And that second semi, was it involved in it? Or? Yeah, the second semi hit the uh, sign after the after the dump truck knocked it over. So it sheared the top of the semi off. All right, there you hear a few key points from John Perrine with Indiana State Police. It appears operator error caused this strange crash that snarled the morning commute just east of downtown Indianapolis. The westbound lanes are closed and the eastbound lanes are badly backed up. That's one of the big things he said. He also said that it could take another three to four hours to clean up as they get some big equipment, including two large cranes in there, to get that uh, signage down. Third big thing, stop driving the wrong way on the right. interstate to get around this. <laughs> Not a good idea. He says either go north or go south to get into downtown. Town. So major takeaways there. We aren't going anywhere from this story. We're going to keep you updated minute to minute with any updates, any changes throughout the morning here on Daybreak. For now, it's, it is 10 after 7. And still ahead, some